Let's build a unicycle. I got a bunch of wheels, some 16s, and I got a, that red rim on the other side is a 20. I'm gonna take it down and see if I can make it work. Typical bicycle wheels are mounted on bearing so that the axle does not turn when the wheel spins. But the unicycle is the opposite. The axle has to be fixed to the wheel so the cranks can turn the wheel. So um, since this is a back wheel or was a back wheel, I think the hub is big enough to slide some sort of solid axle through there. Something big enough I can put a bearing on each end and attach the cranks to. So I'm gonna take this thing apart, see what it looks like on the inside. So the axle came right out, no problem. All the little ball bearings went everywhere, but uh, I don't need them. Now I have this uh, ratcheting thing here, and I'm pretty sure it will unscrew in the direction it ratchets, because I can't imagine it unscrewing in the direction that you pull on the chain. So I think it's gonna come out this way. Let me get a hammer and chisel. I don't have a special tool, but I have a hammer and a chisel. I was right, it came off on unscrewed no problem pretty sure this bearing race looks like it's pressed in there because I can see it looks like two separate pieces so I'm gonna put a punch from the far side and see if this won't knock out so that is exactly what happened that the two bearing races punched out from the back side and now I have a hub with a big hole straight through it and I should be able to work out some kind of solid axle that I can fit a bearing to on each side so if you haven't watched any of my videos before, you gotta understand, I got this thing about using what I have and not buying anything. Sometimes it affects the overall quality of my job, but that's just the way I am. So I have this pipe, it fits in here. It's just a little bit loose. Probably wouldn't make any difference because this is a unicycle, the wheel's never gonna spin fast. However, it's a little too small to fit over this half inch water pipe. And the water pipe almost fits the bearings that I have. I have a bunch of these left over from the cart. So if I split this and open it up enough to get on top of this, I think I'll have a snug fit in the wheel. And if I weld a little bead, just a couple of BBs of bead around the outside, and I can turn them down because I have a lathe now and make this bearing fit tight. And then I'll just need to leave enough sticking out so I can attach a crank arm on each end. Um, I think I'll just cut off a little piece of this red pipe and uh, split it and see what I can do. So I'm gonna call that a success. It is not really tight but it's not loose enough to worry about so i cut a piece the right length sticks out a little bit on each side to keep the bearings give me room for my forks i'm going to actually put them in my lathe and square the ends up i've never been able to do this before because i've never had a lathe before so i've got the, the <clears throat> bushing pipe slid over the inside pipe and it fits good and i left it maybe i don't know half inch longer than the hub to keep my uh my fork's away from the tire a little bit. Now the bearing is a half inch wide and I'm gonna leave one inch for the uh, crank arm. So I'm gonna cut these inch and a half past the uh, little red pipe on both ends and kind of true those up. And then I'm gonna put some weld in here to make sure this doesn't slip on the pipe, although I don't think it will. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of weld around here so I can turn it down to, well, I mangled the end of that pipe. So we can turn it down to get this bearing to fit because it's it's a little loose, but it, it won't take much. Might even, might even braise that, make it easier to turn. Okay, looking good. So I cut a notch out of the red pipe so I could get a good plug weld of the brazing. And then I put some brazing around each end so I can uh, turn that down to get the bearing to fit snugly because it, it it's less than a 16th off. It just needs a little bitty bit. I'm gonna chuck it in the lathe and see what I can do. It's, all this stuff is new to me, so probably won't even record it because I don't want you to see. So I turned down my brazing to fit the bearing and both times I went too far. 
because it's loose again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna put some more brazing on there and I'll turn it down again. It's working uh, slow, but pretty good. Maybe I'll even film it. Maybe. Little more. Try not to go too far. I got one that's a perfect fit. I could tap it the rest of the way on, but I don't want to because I have to take it off. The other side I overcut again, so I'm gonna go rebraze it and try it again. So this is a piece of steel tubing I'm gonna make the bearing holders out of, and I don't have the ability to cut it on the lathe. I don't have a parting tool, but I can uh, use the lathe to scribe a, uh, a good square line on it so I can cut it squarely. So I got this little scratch line. I'm gonna try to cut it on the back side of that line. So I took the little piece of pipe that I cut, which is too big for the bearing. Well, I took my little rings and cut a little chunk out of them, cut a gap out of them because they needed to be smaller. And then through using the vise and using a um, little C-clamp and trial and error, I gradually got the gap cut to the right, uh, what do you call it? I got the right amount of gap removed so that the ring clamps tightly to the bearing. Um, Took a few tries, wasn't hard. And now that the ring fits tightly, I can, uh, I'm gonna weld it back together to make a, uh, a total ring for now. It'll get cut again later on. Clamp it all the way around the bearing. So right now it's snug onto the bearings. So I'm gonna try to get a weld on the top of that cut so I can get this clamp off. And then, then I'll weld that up. And then I'm gonna weld a block on each side drill a hole through the blocks and then cut it in half again. So this would be like a two piece clamp that can clamp around this bearing and the um, fork tube will be welded to the top of it. So see if I can get a little weld on that thing without burning up the bearings, but I got a couple extra, so it'd be okay if I mess one up. Got it, got a good one. So I got in a hurry and skipped a few steps from the camera, but basically I took this square bar and drilled a number seven hole in it and cut a little piece off of it and did that four times. And then I welded those little squares onto the circles I already shrunk down. And then I cut this right in half. So this is gonna be the clamp for the bearing. Um, it's got a number seven hole in the bottom so I can tap that with a quarter by 20. And the holes on the top, I will um, drill a quarter inch so they should match up just right. And hold this bearing without a problem. And the uh, fork tube will come right down here and weld onto the top of this. So, a little progress. I was running out of bike parts. I needed a seat post in this tube here and I had nothing. So I bought these three little bikes for 10 bucks a piece yesterday. And today a friend called and said she saw bikes in the trash. So I got these two bikes here and this one, which is actually an electric driven bike, which I'm sure all that stuff's junk, but it has an interesting back wheel with a sprocket on both sides. That would have come in handy when I was building the double bike, having to be able to put a chain on both sides.
it's time now to um, <clears throat> deal with one of the donor bikes. I need the front forks to um, hold up the unicycle. This is the main part of the unicycle. Um, came apart easy. These little tabs were not correct, are not, you know, they're not going to work for my bearing. And uh, as opposed to the last bike I cut up, these things are really welded on there pretty good. I had to spend a lot of time getting them off. I didn't want to burn through the, the tube. They had a pretty good weld on them, but we got them off. I'll tell you, getting bicycles to stay put while you're putting them together can be kind of infuriating. <clears throat> I have the wheel and the vise, but that doesn't mean it's straight. And the bearings move around and the front forks away like nothing, so they're kind of challenging. I got them where I wanted them to put a tack on. I realized I didn't have my freaking welding hood on, so I just used my safety squint and uh, got two tacks on here so that I could reposition it and get the full weld make sure it wouldn't fall off. I'm kind of trying to be careful about um, <clears throat> not welding through the bearing which I just did because I grounded it to the axle and I'm welding through the bearing and I made a little bump in it but it went away after a while. On welding these thin, thin metal parts to these bicycles, I've kind of waffled between uh, <coughs> the TIG, no, the MIG gun, and the um, TIG with brazing. And I kind of think that I'm stuck now on using the MIG gun and just using lots of spot wells. Um, neither one of them are coming out beautiful, but I think it's just the better of the two worlds. Now it's back to the donor bike. We need uh, cranks, we need pedals, and we need a seat tube. And uh, they're all coming out of this little uh, kid's bike. Um, everything on the left side of a bike, at least a normal bike, so I don't know about today's fancy racing bikes. Everything on the left side is left-handed threads. Everything on the right side is right-handed threads. This can be a little bit confusing, but just uh, Keep in mind when you're having something that won't come undone, you may be turning the wrong way. All right, this is where we are so far. Um, I got the bearings mounted, I got the caps tightened down. I added a little gusset right there because this stuff's so thin. But I think I have enough wells on it and it runs pretty true. So what I'm going to do now is cut things up. I'm going to stick them in this hole and put a little weld on them. And I think that's all I'm going to need to do for the cranks. Now, once I weld those cranks on, I can't get the bearings off the shafts anymore. I took the dry rotted tire off of this red rim and I took the dry rotted tire off of the pink rim and I put it on here and it's holding the air. So it's going to do for now. Um, and then I have this seat post that I cut off. You saw me cut that off and I cleaned it up. We're gonna stick it on that end. And then, uh, except for modifying the seat, we will have a unicycle. So let's uh, I'm gonna cut these cranks and see, what, see how they fit. Okay, cranks are cut and they fit. And it'll be a pretty easy weld job. And I probably would be able to cut the weld off if I ever needed to take the thing apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pedals on. The right hand thread should be on the right hand side, but with a unicycle, I don't know if there's a front or a back. Um, I want to put the pedals on so I can align it better. Put one facing up, one facing down, and put a little weld on it. Probably won't weld it all the way because of <clears throat> a lot of unknowns at this point. I've been careful with my ground cable not to weld through the bearings. In other words, if I were to put the ground cable down here or just leave it on my table like it normally is, and if I were to weld here, the current would run through the shaft, through the bearings, back to ground. And those greasy ball bearings are not a good conductor of electricity, so they would arc, which means I would get little weld bumps in my bearings that kind of pretty much ruin them. So, always keeping the ground moved around so that right now I'm going to weld here, the current can go straight through the shaft and it doesn't need to go through the bearings. And that's what I'll try to keep on doing until I'm finished. I'm getting ready to weld this uh, crank on there.
Hell yeah. This happened but the seat tube from the donor bike slides right over the inside fork tube it's a perfect fit and I made an executive decision this um, bracket this gusset is in the front so that means this clamp needs to be toward the back this is a seat post clamp and uh, I'm gonna put it on here we're gonna put a little weld on it I think I have it the right height it's kind of a guessing game I'll just put a little weld and we'll put the seat on and I might go try it out. <laughs> Been 40 years. Two tips about learning to ride a unicycle when you're an old person. As soon as you even think you're gonna fall, just let the bike fall, Let just step off. Cause really your feet are only a few inches off the ground. It's when you try to save it and get that extra half a pedal and you get out of balance, that's when you get in trouble. And two, don't bring it home to practice cause your wife's gonna see you fall down and she's gonna have a conniption fit and threaten you with bodily harm and force you to quit riding the unicycle. So. Um, yeah, that happened. So I brought it back to the foundry where I could practice unmolested. And she's probably right. Uh, if I were to hurt myself and be stuck in the bed, she'd probably beat me to death with the unicycle. So I am going to give it away um, as soon as I finish the seat. Um, I'm still riding on that little seat, which makes it hard because it doesn't want to stay under your bottom. It just it falls out the back. But uh, I love this thing. It's a bunch of fun. So I need to make a proper or a more proper unicycle seat. So I cut out this little half template and I put it on some sheet metal and scribed it and then flipped it over and scribed the other side. And then I added a flange. I'm gonna cut that out and I cut some, I'm gonna cut this out, cut some slots in here so I can bend it down and have a, um, see, I'm trying to make a seat here. I don't know what I'm doing. So got it cut out, got lots of relief cuts. It looks maybe a little wide, but I'm gonna start bending it see what it looks like so I got it cut out and bent and it does feel too wide kind of sticking it in my crotch and feeling it so I put another line I'm gonna cut these uh, <clears throat> relief cuts a little deeper and bend it again we've got a shape and a size that I think is pretty comfortable so I need to straighten these uh, tabs out so I can weld them together and then trim them all um, to make it a little less obnoxious and then put some kind of band around it. This isn't a work of art. I don't know what it is. Look at this. This is beautiful. Well, maybe it will be. I have to clean this up a little bit. So this is a key seat that came on one of the little cheap bikes. I got the cover off. It actually unscrewed. Kind of surprising. I'm going to trim the corners off. See if I can't get it under here to give me a support structure. It's going to stink. I'm going to cut it with the grinder and it's going to stink like melted plastic. So I trimmed the two sides and the little lip that was in the back, and it fits freaking awesome. I'm gonna put uh, three bolts in it, and then I'm gonna glue the foam on the top, and then I'm gonna put something around the perimeter because these unicycle seats take a beating every time you throw the unicycle down. You hit right here. So uh, let's see if I can find some bolts for that. So the seat is welded around the edge and grinded down and I got the plastic old kid plastic frame under it and I'm going to glue some foam on it next. I'm use this spray glue. I think it'll hold it on there and then I'm 
cover with fabric. And I'm gonna put something around the perimeter to keep the uh, fabric from getting cut instantly because these things take a beating. So the foam is stuck to the sheet metal with some spray adhesive and I kind of trimmed it. And I'm gonna put this heavy fabric around the outside edge. Just seems like a good thing to do before I um, put this around the outside edge before I stretch the fabric, the covering. And I'm gonna do this again with this uh, spray contact. Stuff works good for cloth and stuff. Now we need to wrap the seat in some black fabric. Pull it tight on the bottom. Fix it some kind of way. There you go. I just need to mount it. All right, I'm just messing. I bought a unicycle seat because the other one was very uncomfortable. And I didn't think I could finish it and make it look even halfway decent. So I bought a seat. I did not realize that they don't come with the little seat bracket like regular bike seats do. So um, looking on the internet, it looks like they have a curved plate that bolts to these four little studs. So I'm cutting out a plate. I'll drill the holes and I'm gonna weld this plate to the top of the seat post that's in the unit. So the new seat is somewhat of a mixed blessing. Um, obviously it's more comfortable and obviously it helps keep the unicycle underneath you and keeps it from getting away from you. But it also makes it a little slower to relieve yourself from the unicycle when you think you're gonna fall. It kind of tends to stick between your legs, which um, for me is not necessarily a good thing. So kids are coming over this weekend, we'll give it away. In the meantime, um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I got a bunch of other bicycle videos. They're not very popular, but uh, I'm going to keep putting them on because that's what I'm doing right now.